Hello, hello, hello. Oh boy, am I excited. The Docker extensions are out. Oh, we've been working on the Meshery extension for Docker for some time now. And Nick has been giving us lots of feedback. Uh, my name is Lee Calcote. I'm the founder of Layer 5. Oh, and I'm Nick Jackson. I'm a developer advocate at HashiCorp and a fairly long-term Docker user. And if you, uh, if you wouldn't mind, Lee, um, maybe I can tell the, the good folks all about that experience. So for me, as a, as a kind of a developer, I found Docker in, like, I, I'd like to say about eight years ago and Docker for Mac. I, it might be around, I might be, you know, maybe, I'm sure it's around there anyway. And what I was enabled to do with Docker for Mac was I could do things like run my SQL containers. I could run Postgres databases and I could run them really easily, really quickly. And I could do it in a, in a kind of a disposable way. I didn't need to kind of pollute my, my local um, environment. And this was like a really big thing for me. I, I kind of like found this intriguing very early on and and being able to then sort of extend that and keep that sort of clean room environment as I kind of extended it out at testing was super useful. So I used Docker for a long, long time. And then as the kind of the world started to change and people started to actually use containers in production and running things like Mesos and Marathon, again, like, you know, Docker desktop was there and I was using it day in, day out every day. And then of course, now we're kind of moving over to Kubernetes, Docker again delivered and, and gave me a way that I could run Kubernetes in my, my local environment. And of course, we're, we're moving one stage further still and we're kind of starting to look at service mesh, which is running on top of Kubernetes and, and kind of being able to do all of those things with smart networking. And, and I'm pretty excited about the new extension that uh, you've, you've got around with, with Mesh really, which is kind of gonna bring those capabilities for me too. I'm right there with you, Nick, actually, Docker desktop has been a staple of my daily routine for about as long as I can remember. I think it was at DockerCon EU, it might have been Copenhagen, when uh, the integration with Kubernetes first came out. And uh, I've been a fan ever since. It's uh, just been really exciting to develop an extension for Meshery that now makes, um, brings that same experience for service mesh. Um, in the same way in which Docker has brought that bundled experience for Kubernetes. Uh, what's been pretty neat also is that people are able to take, just like, like you have with, with some of the apps that, that you've been working with, is to take your Compose apps, get them over to Kubernetes, get them on, onboarded onto a service mesh, and do some experimentation, do some deployments, um, maybe even do some learning about the capabilities of a mesh that developers may or may not be familiar with. Right. And, and like, you know, I've been, I've been using Docker Compose for, I think, as long as there's been Docker Compose. And I, I'm pretty still clued up. I, you know, I, I, I still pretty think today that, like, there's, there's no easier way to create a sort of a simple multi-tier application, just specifically in, in sort of the development environment. And when it comes to service mesh, like should developers care about service mesh? Like, do they have to care about it? I think the answer is yes. And, and I think that's because you need to think about what I think is like kind of three key things, which is that re the way you implement reliability patterns is changing. You, you're kind of no longer codifying them into your application. It's now externalized in the service mesh. And you need to kind of like learn service mesh and, and kind of understand how it works as a platform component being able to kind of have a tight feedback loop for developing and deploying workloads on console service mesh or other service meshes is really important. And we need a great developer experience. Like the key thing is that we need to be able to have that, that developer experience to be able to run locally, potentially disconnected that we're kind of used to. So onto like the, the, the kind of the reliability, just kind of digging into that a little bit deeper. This is how I used to do things. So if I was writing something with say with Spring, I would kind of codify my my reliability inside of my application so i'm kind of like saying that hey this this particular method is is retriable and like you know this is this is using sql exceptions and things like that based on the the, the retries and 
that isn't necessarily going to be the case anymore. You know, you, you can think about externalizing that into the service mesh, and, and you can do that not just with RESTful APIs, but, you know, with database connections and all sorts of things as well, because service mesh really understands a lot of those application protocols. And then when you start to think about that, like, developer uh, experience and, and that learning and why you need to kind of develop against service mesh, well, you know, there's, there's a lot of really sophisticated capabilities that Service Mesh brings, such as a lot of automation around things like canary deployments. And, and that's kind of working in a slightly different way than what we're used to. And, and to be able to effectively sort of leverage those, you need to really sort of understand them and, and on a functional level. I think observability is one of the real big things that Service Mesh brings, and there's a multitude of metrics that's emitted from the sort of the, the, the capability that all your network traffic is flowing between these sidecars and understanding what they are, which metrics are important to you and, and kind of being able to leverage those, again, is, is a really important learning capability. And then I think you've got to think about the zero trust environment that Service Mesh gives. You can't sort of take for granted that a, a network connection is going to be available. Like you could, you could sort of think about externalized connections and zero trust. Well. I might not be able to make a call to like, I don't know, Google or something like that. You know, that, that external network connection in a zero trust environment is potentially not there. It's enabled by configuration. So being able to kind of test my applications and being able to kind of, you know, just play around with things before I have to push them into a, a larger environment really helps with that fast feedback loop. And then there's performance testing and behavioral benchmarking. I mean, you know, this is one of the kind of the staples of Meshery, the, the ability that I can kind of run performance tests against my application, the, the fact that I can kind of run these behavioral benchmarks, what happens if this particular service fails, does my sort of configuration around reliability work correctly, and then helping me to kind of run some diagnostics when, when I need to. All of those things are, are really, really important. But you know, I could talk about those things all day, but maybe it's just better if I just show you how it works. With Docker Desktop running and the Meshery extension installed, we can see that Meshery has provisioned and discovered console as a service mesh. It has performed this operation using the Meshery adapter for console, which is one of a number of adapters that Meshery has. It is connected to the Docker Desktop instance of Kubernetes. Meshery is a multi-Kubernetes manager capable of performing lifecycle management of Kubernetes as well as 10 different service meshes. You can go in and further configure console service mesh. In this case, though, we're more interested in our Compose app and how it has been imported as a Meshery app and now being prepared for deployment into Kubernetes and ultimately onto our service mesh of choice in this case, console. Before we deploy, we can also use Meshery to take that same Docker Compose application and go and further explore all of the capabilities of console. We can select the version of console that we'd like to work with, explore its differentiated capabilities, in this case, like its load balancing capabilities with hash policies. Users can choose to apply any number of hash policies which affect the load balancing algorithm. A little more intuitively is use of MeshMap as a visual designer for developers to explore this same functionality. So again, we'll choose console, we'll choose the version we want to work with, and in this visual topology, using MeshMap's designer, we will drag and drop various features, various capabilities of console service mesh and can go through and deeply configure its functionality, explore and configure as you create new designs and save those designs. We'll recall our two-tier Compose app that we've previously imported. We've taken a moment to add in a few additional capabilities of console, wiring those up using the visual designer. We can explore service intentions, um, service routing, even the terminating gateway from the console mesh. Using the visual designer, 
we can then take our Compose app and fully realize it on top of Kubernetes and in context of a service mesh deployment. As we deploy our once Docker Compose app and now Kubernetes and service mesh app, we can move into the visualizer mode where MeshSync has discovered our console service mesh deployment and now our two-tier Compose app deployment. We can look at its metrics coming out of the deployment itself, investigate its network I.O., for example, and then further dig into and establish interactive terminal sessions with each of the pods that have been deployed, each of these containers. We can establish a logging session or interactive sessions in which you can explore how your app is behaving in context of a service mesh. The last points I had on that slide earlier on was about developer experience. And, and one of the things that I've loved with working with Docker over the last eight, eight or so years is that developer experience. It, it just makes it really easy that I can just get out my laptop and I can just go do my job. And I think now with Docker extensions and, and the meshery extension to be able to deliver service mesh into that environment, I kind of continue that trend. I can kind of just write my code without having to worry about my development environment. You know, more than that, I'm impressed by how much you were able to do without leaving Docker desktop. Uh, that's really something. The extensions are pretty interesting. The meshery extension is now available for everyone else. It's time to go out and try the meshery extension, deploy a console mesh, learn something new. I know I did in watching Nick and some of the configurations of console. Um, Nick, thanks so much for being an early user of the extension and, and for sharing your story today with, with everyone at DockerCon. Oh, it's my absolute pleasure, honestly, anytime.